Yeah, exactly. We've been out here since around about 6.30 this morning. Uh, and, you know, look, we knew that with the arrival of the warm weather, there was going to be a surge in the number of small boats that were going to be heading towards the white cliffs of Dover behind me. And that's exactly what we found. We weren't out for long on the water. Uh, and we could see on the GPS system here on this boat uh, that there was a French rescue vessel in the area. And while you can't see the dinghies, that tells you that it is following a small boat with people on board heading this way so we went out there and we located that boat we saw it following uh, with about 20 to 30 people on board all in life jackets um, you know it's a relatively calm day today um, uh, but the water was lapping up the side of the boat the people on board were sitting in life jackets relatively uh, calm we then saw the arrival of the border force boat and we witnessed that search and rescue vessel they pulled up alongside uh, the dinghy with the 20, 30 people on board uh, and they escorted them off. Now, this is just the latest in, a, in an uptick, really, of the amount of people coming over. We now know that around 286 people came over yesterday. That's on top of that record 872 people on Saturday, 113 people on Sunday. Uh, and that is exactly what we saw the, uh, this afternoon the French vessel handed over to the British border force vessel and then it headed back we had the Coast Guard drone up uh, in front of us as well and then we saw another boat come and collect the dinghy uh, once all of those people were on board and now we are heading back to shore at six and a half hours later and I mean as far as you know and you might not be able to answer this question but one of the things I get asked a lot from people is what happens to the dinghy um, does it get re um, sort of constituted? Does it get put somewhere? Does it get sent back to France? How, what happens to the actual vessel itself? Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, the skipper here told us that he thinks it goes to landfill. Um, but, you know, they, these fishing boats, they used to pick up the dinghies because before they used to just be discarded in the water and left out there. But now there's a separate boat after the Border Force British boat comes and collects these people. Then another boat comes and collects the dinghies up. So we can only assume that they go uh, towards landfill. But they are in, uh, you know, this one today, obviously, the French boat was following. Uh, it was staying. It wasn't intervening. It was just following the boat through to British waters um, and the boat was in good condition there was no uh, danger risk there to the people on board everything was intact uh, so it just came and it got swept up and taken away after they were escorted off right and, and what we're also learning from the other day particularly when there was a lot of um, uh, people coming over 870 that more and more people uh, in in the boat so I think it was only 15 actual boats that carried that many people so I mean they're packing them in in, in a way that, that we haven't seen before. Yeah, exactly. And also we know, you know, we saw this one boat with 20, 30 people, but we can see on that GPS system inside the cabin here that there were at least four other boats out there today. Uh, the skipper said that he was getting uh, reports, intel, saying that there were over 50 people on another boat, including children. Uh, so, you know, the one that we saw was, was just a fraction of this, but there were definitely more uh, to come today. Uh, and we will see those reflected in the figures tomorrow, which won't make for happy reading for the government unfortunately no and and what information were you able to glean from from the guys on the boat that you're on in terms of what they see um on a regular basis because one of the things we're also told is that as much as there are many boats that we know about coming and we see border force picking them up or rnli picking them up in the in the channel there might be other boats which are coming across and sort of landing without anybody really noticing Yeah, exactly, definitely. And I mean, the boats that we saw today, uh, you know, the boats that we saw uh, coming over Border Force uh, took a long time to come and collect those people mm. off the boats. And that's because they were elsewhere here in the channel dealing with other people, other small boats, uh, with people on board that they needed to rescue first. So that French vessel, as I say, was following them for a long time before it could, inter before it could leave them uh, to be picked up by the British. And yeah, exactly, I'll 
skipper has been coming out here for 40 odd years and he says that look there are bigger boats um, there are more and more people packed onto the boats and you know they, there's no chance of stopping them out here once they get into the waters it really needs to be done before they inflate the boats and get on from the French side because once they get out here there's really very little uh, that can be done apart from come pick them up rescue them and escort them back to the UK coastline yeah and and do any of those guys who do what what you're you're watching them do today the people on these fishing boats I mean do they see any possible end to this ridiculous situation Well, like I say, they just say that it really needs to be stopped at the source because, you know, I asked uh, earlier whether uh, it's apparent that Rishi Sunak, as he says, has got a handle on this situation, and the answer was no. I mean, the answer was, look, we knew that with the warm weather, more people were going to come over. Obviously, Rishi Sunak said uh, the other day as Parliament returned from recess uh, that he didn't think that the fact that we've had poor weather conditions over the summer was a factor. He thought the lower numbers compared to last year of people coming over were because his policies were working. Uh, but I think this weekend and into this week, this weather has just shown that that might not uh, be the case. No, quite. Well, Victoria, thanks very much indeed uh, for that report. Victoria Innes there, Talk TV's correspondent, just off the coast of Dover there, uh, having watched the seas uh, literally since about 6.30 this morning, uh, watched the border force, you know, bring in um, a boatload of migrants who have come on a dinghy, uh, many, many more of them now getting on each and every dinghy, as many as 30, sometimes 40 at a time. It is quite an extraordinary business. It is one of the probably most efficient businesses, I think, that most people have ever seen in terms of the way that the human trafficking model actually works. Because many of these people uh, who have been thought to have paid their way before they actually get on the boat, many of them don't pay their way before they get on the boat. Many of them actually uh, incur a debt when they get on the boat because they then are indebted to the criminal enterprise of the human traffickers. And God knows how they then get them to pay the money back. But what they do uh, is they get them to pay the money back by probably interfering in some kind of criminal process.